Today, I would like to solve one of the most existential questions we are facing today. Is it how to avert a rapidly progressing climate crisis? No. Is it figuring out the best monetary policy changes to tackle recent economic challenges? No. Is it figuring out how to break through the Fermi paradox? Hell no. Today, we're going to finally determine if 6S is really better than 4S. Recursion Labs. For science. I've been working on designing a new lightweight 3-inch HD build, and I'm not sure if I should go with 4S or 6S at this point. I know there are tons of videos on 6S being the superior choice, but most seem to be based on personal feel and not science. Some even go as far to compare 1300 milliamp hour 4S batteries against 1300 milliamp 6S batteries and act surprised concluding that they last longer. I feel like I am not satisfied with the information provided, which is why I'm focusing on these tests. I've chosen to use two Emacs 1306 motors suitable to figure this out. One is rated for 4,000 kV for 4S and the other 2,700 kV for 6S. Why does kV matter? Well, it comes down to motor RPM. A 4,000 kV motor spinning at 1 volt would give you 4,000 RPM. So, a 4,000 kV motor spinning at 16 volts would give you 64,000 RPM. Running the same motor at 24 volts would increase the RPM by 47% to 96,000 RPM, which would draw a ton of current. Lowering the kV of the motor down to 2,700 brings the RPM back down closer to the 4S equivalent to 64,800 RPM. I've used my dynamometer to measure the actual kV of both these motors. The 4000 kV motor measures at an actual 3924 kV and the 2700 kV motor measures at 2613 kV. This is great because now instead of having a 1.25% rated difference in RPMs, we are actually at 0.11%, which is practically identical. To conduct the testing, I'm using my fully automated propulsion testing methodology, which if you're not familiar with, I've created a dedicated video linked in the description. You should take a look if you have not seen it yet, or you could just proceed as assuming that this is backed by decent science. I ran two sets of tests for each motor. One was done at 4 volts per cell to capture the performance of a motor on a fully charged battery with a little bit of load sag. The second test was done at 3.7 volts per cell to capture the performance of the motor when your battery is becoming depleted. Here are the results of the tests. I have a data sheet containing all the compiled results that you can find a link to and download in the video description if you would like to play with it yourself. I'd imagine most of you aren't interested in taking it to play with yourself. So you could just lie back and let me play with it for you. And a good place to start would be thrust. This chart outlines the thrust output of each motor by throttle percentage. Up until around 35% utilization, the motor output is near equal. After 35%, the 6S motor outputs an average of 3.3% more thrust up until around 85% throttle, where it separates further. Visualizing the thrust difference between the motors, you can see there is a back and forth before 6S takes an undisputed lead. But the thrust is so low at this point, a few percentages really doesn't make a difference. Thrust isn't everything, since you'll get amazing thrust if you power a 4S motor with 6S voltages, but you'll get terrible efficiency. Now, this is where things get interesting. Here, you can see the grams of thrust the motor generates per watt of power mapped to the motor utilization. 6S is a clear winner in efficiency up to around 45% throttle, where the efficiency diverges in favor of the 4S motor. Since the output was near equal in the lower range, the efficiency gains here should be for free. But does a loss of efficiency in the upper range matter given it has more thrust? Yes. Here I've mapped grams of thrust to watts of power. Up until about 140 grams of thrust, the 6S motor is clearly more efficient at generating that thrust over 4S. 4S is marginally more efficient from that point up until about 180 grams of thrust, where it takes a clear lead in efficiency until about 325 grams of thrust. The hover point of a 3-inch HD quad is typically between 45 and 62 grams of thrust per motor. That should give you an idea of how efficient the 6S motor would be the majority of time based on how you personally fly. This may quantify why people feel like there is greater low-end control on 6S. Now, does anything significant change when the batteries start to drop voltage. Looking at the thrust chart for 3.7 volts per cell, it looks nearly identical, albeit with less thrust being generated as you'd expect. Motor efficiency becomes more interesting. The gap in the low end becomes wider in favor of success, and the point at which efficiency diverges moves to around 50%. Here's a view of the efficiency ratings between the motors at both voltages, showing greater efficiency for both at a lower voltage, which makes sense since the voltage to kV differential should be in favor of efficiency. The same efficiency can be reflected on looking at the watt required to generate each gram of thrust for different voltages. This is a good view to see how kV and voltage matching directly affect efficiency. It also shows that 6S really doesn't have any advantages over 4S at lower battery voltages, as long as the sag isn't due to heat generated from higher currents. What am I talking about? Switch to Thermovision. 
Here is a side-by-side -side view of both motors running under load at half throttle. The forest motor requires a higher current for the same watts of power, which increases the heat produced, measured at around 15%. Heat creates resistance, causing the voltage to sag, which means at this point the heat buildup will cause the forest motor to be even less efficient against the 6S motor. So here are the wins for the 6S setup. Greater load amid throttle efficiency, for free, less current heat generated under load, helping overall efficiency, greater thrust output at the mid to top end. For forest we have greater mid to high throttle efficiency, and um, it hurts less when you stick your tongue on the battery leads. Now for larger motors, this is great to have both options. But for smaller aircraft, there are nowhere near as many 6S options. There are not a ton of options for 6S motors and far fewer options for batteries, especially at different sizes and quality. I would love to see some decent lightweight options for 400 and 500 milliamp hour 6S batteries. Get on it! I hope these tests were useful to anyone looking to make a decision on 4S or 6S. I'll be working on producing more motor and propeller tests soon.